Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a squat and deadlift day. Uh, pretty good workout today. Uh, I decided not to use the box today. I decided to go ahead and just do a back squat using the safety bar. I uh, want to work on these. want to work on trying to keep that vertical shank while getting deep. The box squats, having done that for a couple weeks, um, I think it's going to help. I haven't looked at the footage yet. I'm going to be seeing it the first time as I'm recording. I've just kind of thrown it into the software. Um, and I'm voicing over. Um, but I did 421 and I got a triple. Um, I tried to get deep on these, but I'm about to find out from this footage what we got. Um, first rep a hair higher than I would like. First rep a hair higher than I would like. Uh, I think I got depth. Second one, third one, let's see. Third one, we definitely are good. And I left a little in the tank, and I think something I want to do with this is kind of like I'm doing with, with the deficit deadlifts, kind of pick a working weight and work on getting just a quality set with a, you know, maybe maybe a rep or two in reserve and just build that up. Um, and the, the deficit deadlifts, I kind of did the same thing. I stopped, I left a rep or two in the tank, but a, still a very, very challenging work set. Very challenging work set. Uh, so I did, uh, you know, my 500 for five. Keeping in mind, this is about the equivalent to me of, because again, you guys have seen me do it, of about 540 to 550 on a deadlift bar and no deficit. Uh, just in terms of, of RP, because I've done that stuff. I think you guys have seen me do like 565 for four. You know, I've done 550 for five. But that's with a deadlift bar and that's no deficit. So the reason I'm doing these is again, the grip training is a lot more difficult. Deficits are harder on grip. Uh, stiff bar is definitely harder on grip. I'm trying to build my grip on the deadlifts. And I'm also just like I'm using the safety bar, I'm kind of taking the Louis Simmons approach of let's get as strong as possible with the lightest weight possible. And meaning I'll just hypertrophy everything beyond that. But in order to, to recover the way that I need to recover and still deadlift and squat at this frequency, I need to modulate what I'm doing there. Okay? And it, it needs to be done very carefully. Uh, and and I, that's what's going to get me where I want to be. Like I want, I, I would like to see at my next meet, I'd like to see a 650 deadlift next time I compete. Obviously, the long-term goal is 700, but I feel like if I can just get the grip stronger, I'll be good. A squat, anything 500 plus, but you guys know I want that big bench. So the bench is the biggest priority for me. Uh, but again, I kind of like this sort of approach a little bit. And, and the main thing is we're still keeping heavy squatting and deadlifting in, but again, we're picking variations of things that are, that are more difficult. Uh, all right, good mornings. Good mornings are gonna be a staple. I'm already seeing the carryover. Okay, notice that that squat was relatively easy with that safety bar. So my squat is coming back up almost entirely off good mornings. I'm not doing belt squats, not doing any of the quad work. I'm focusing more on, on the movements that I know give me the best carryover. So I'm doing a little bit of squatting and then I'm gonna do the good mornings because the good mornings carry over for me massively. And when I get weak at good mornings, my squat plummets. And when I've been my strongest at good mornings, my squat tends to be good. So the way I'm doing these today, I didn't go for a really heavy set. Um, I just went with this nice, nice moderate weight. This is 261 pounds, got my three by 10. Maybe work this up, maybe work this up a little bit. And again, this is difficult on the safety bar, All right? The safety bar is the hardest bar to do these on. Uh, you know, I've never really passed more than about 300 pounds for 10 on this, ever. When I was squatting way up into the 500s, okay? My max on this was only, has only been ever about 420, 430. Uh, but when I use other bars, I can hit a lot more weight. But we come back over to the fact that this is more difficult means I can, I can load less weight and still get a big multi-joint movement that trains a movement pattern that I want, but hopefully beat me up a little less. Um, and it's tissue growth, tissue growth, tissue growth. Everything's hypertrophy now. Okay, we're doing these peak sets, and then I need everything else to maximize muscle growth. I've got to build muscle. I've got to build tendon, lean tissue. Um, and, you know, and that's come up too, and people are like, well, how are you going to do that? You know, you don't need to, to gain weight. And it's like people are not understanding. It's still body composition, right? 
I don't plan on going up a weight class. I plan on getting leaner. <laughs> uh, you know, so that's the thing. You put on five pounds of muscle, you lose, and then lose five pounds of fat, or back and forth with it, you weigh the same amount. You're still bigger. You mean bigger in terms of muscle. So that's why even with the upper body stuff, I'm continuing to just thicken everything. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And it needs to be posterior chain focus because that's what builds my lifts. That's what builds my lift. Hip extension strength, um, upper middle back, hamstrings. Okay, that's what gets it done. Um, but I was happy with those good mornings because that's a nice, good training weight. I would like to continue to improve on that. Uh, because I do those first and because I do the deficit deadlifts, my hamstrings tend to be very fatigued. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to get even a second really high quality set of the, the glute ham raises. Glute ham raises carry over to my deadlift tremendously. So I do want to keep them in the mix, but I can only handle so many of them before my hamstrings will cramp if I'm not careful. So again, come in and just get those quality sets in after the good mornings. Now we're getting complete hamstring development in the whole mix, and then we come in and finish up with the reverse hyper extensions. Okay, the reverse hypers. Uh, this is always my finisher. I did my normal five sets of 10. I kept the brakes very, very short on these because again, I wanted to get out of this heat. Uh, plus I do these light enough now that uh, is again, recovery between sets tends to be very, very good. And a lot of what I'm looking at here is just the recovery on the low back, the blood flow to all of it, a little extra glute work, but mainly putting that back into traction. So that's most of the benefit at this point because the good mornings and deadlifts and stuff build all that. They, they build it very effectively. This helps me recover. And just like we talk about watching what we're doing in terms of total recovery, this also helps on the back end of it. This helps deal with the compression from the axial loading. And this is how I can get away with deadlifting and squatting and things relatively happy a couple times a week. Okay, by picking our modalities carefully, paying attention to recovery, and then finishing up with uh, the glute ham raises. I'm sorry, the reverse hyper extensions. I get tongue tied sometimes. I think people are used to that with me, that happens. Even after over a decade of doing this and 10,000 plus videos, I still get tongue tied. Oh well, what do you do? Uh, but overall, very happy with the workout. It was a nice challenging workout. Um, the heat does make it hard, but you know, it is what it is. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.